Hi, we're going to create a family tree on quadrilaterals. This is a great study tool for this unit in that it summarizes all the different characteristics and properties of the various quadrilaterals that we studied in this unit. So if you want, you can have a blank sheet of paper out and recreate the structure of the, uh, the family tree that you see here, or you can print this from the agenda for the week uh, under Monday. So we'll start at the very top. A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. So we will have uh, just a four-sided figure with the word quadrilateral in it and the definition inside that. So polygon with four sides. The first branch we're going to study is parallelogram. And that's the one that we, we began our studies on um, was parallelograms. And within that, we're going to summarize six different uh, features of a parallelogram properties. So one of which is both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Another one has to do with uh, both pairs of sides. And this time, if we know that they're congruent, then it's also a feature of the parallelogram. Another one involved, do you remember the one where we, we talked about just one pair of opposite sides? And when that condition held where it was just one pair of opposite sides, two things needed to happen. Um, for that one set of opposite sides, that set of opposite sides had to be both parallel and congruent. So I'll underline the word and. Um, we also had one um, on diagonals. And that was that the diagonals bisected each other. So diagonals bisect each other. We had ones on opposite angles. And this one also had both pairs of opposite angles. Are congruent. And finally, we had consecutive angles. And consecutive angles are supplementary. We might want to also put in parentheses that consecutive angles are also called same side interior angles. Now it would be great if we could just have a blank copy of this right before we're about to uh, take the quiz or test and just see if we can summarize all these uh, by memory and see how much of it you actually uh, have memorized by heart and you should know all of these properties. So within the whole classification of parallelograms, you have um, two other branches, one being rectangles and the other being a rhombus. So we're going to first explore uh, the rectangle side of the family. Okay, within a rectangle, the um, what's important is that everything that falls below a certain classification, so for example, rectangle and rhombus falls below a parallelogram, so that means that the rectangle and rhombus inherits all the properties of the above. So in this case, it's going to have all um, properties of a parallelogram under uh, its own properties. So uh, since a rectangle is a parallelogram, it'll have all the properties of a parallelogram. Uh, plus on top of that, we're going to now list why it's special. And one of the reasons is that it has four right angles. You'll want to refer to the other graphic organizer we created to um, see what is the minimum that you would need to prove that something is a rectangle and that was uh, one of the right angles is, um, is or one of the angles of a parallelogram is a right angle and with that you're equipped with enough information to prove that it is a rectangle. But as a property uh, what makes a rectangle a rectangle is that all four right, if all four angles within a rectangle are right angles. You also have a special feature on the diagonals, which is, which that feature is the diagonals are congruent. Now on the rhombus side, that's the other side of the branch of parallelograms is you've you got a rhombus, and with a rhombus. It, one of the special features is, again, because it's a parallelogram, it's got all the properties of a parallelogram. 
And what makes it special is that all sites are congruent. The diagonals also have a special feature that not all parallelograms have. Diagonals are perpendicular. Remember there was two things about rhombus diagonals and it was the other one was diagnosed bisect opposite angles. Finally, someone had mentioned if a rectangle and a rhombus got married, um, then together they form a square. So a square is the most a special type of parallelograms in that it has all the properties of a parallelogram plus the properties of a rectangle and a rhombus. So all properties of parallelogram of rectangles and of rhombus holds true. So to the what that summarizes what we know about parallelograms within this box and then below that these were our special parallelograms now offshooting from quadrilaterals um, besides parallelograms if something isn't a parallelogram it might be a kite okay so that's another special type of quadrilateral and a kite is something that we studied just the other day so let me zoom in on this so we can write out the properties but one, one thing is, now we're going to realize since kite isn't under the classification of parallelograms, it doesn't have the, all the properties of the parallelogram. So in fact, a kite is special in the sense that both pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. So that in this feature would be this would be one set and this would be the other set, and they're consecutive to each other. Another one would be opposite sides are not congruent. If they were, they'd be a parallelogram. The diagonals, this property is shared um, with a rhombus, but diagonals are perpendicular. And then lastly, you have just one pair of opposite angles are congruent. If you wanna mark that in this diagram, that would mean this angle and this angle is congruent to each other. And our last classification of quadrilaterals, uh, another special one that we studied that's uh, not a parallelogram is that of a trapezoid. So let's go ahead and look at the trapezoid family next. And so with a trapez, trapezoid you have one of the special features is that you have one only one pair of opposite sides is parallel so one pair of opposite sides are parallel also you have consecutive leg angles which in parentheses you guys can write SSI Think of SSI, are supplementary. If you want a visual of that, you can simply um, mark off this as angle one and angle two, angle three and angle four. And we can say from that, that measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180. Measure of angle three plus measure of angle four is equal to 180. Now within the classification of a trapezoid, because not all of them have legs that are congruent, but you also have something called an isosceles trapezoid. And what makes that special is that it's not only a trapezoid, so it's got all the properties of a trapezoid, and you have um, the legs are congruent. So in this picture, these sides would be congruent. And when that's true, there are certain things that fall into uh, that end up being true as well, which is one of which is that the diagonals are congruent, as well as the base angles 
Let me zoom in here a little bit. Base angles are congruent. Okay, if we go back to our picture, so again, that's diagonals are congruent and base angles are congruent. If we go back to our pictures of our parallelograms, if you want to mark off the actual diagram itself because you're a visual per person, you can also, and I'll, I'll switch over to red so you guys can see what I'm marking, but um, a rhombus, again, by definition, all sides of a rhombus are congruent. It's got all the features of a parallelogram, so you can mark off that the sides are parallel. For a rectangle, you guys have four angles are congruent because, and they're all 90 degrees. And if you mesh the two together, you get a square, which has four congruent sides and four right angles. For the uh, parallelogram diagram, you can also certainly mark off that the sides, opposite sides are parallel with these arrow markers as well as the fact that they're congruent. Opposite angles are congruent, so that angle and that angle are congruent, as well as this angle and this angle. Don't wanna draw the diagonals in just because it will um, go over the words, but you can most certainly look back at your old graphic organizer, which does have all the features uh, of a parallelogram marked off in a blank parallelogram. If you have any questions, you can certainly rewind this video and go over some of the features again, or when we uh, reconvene as a class, go ahead and ask the questions.